Hi everybody, what's up? This is another video about microfossils. Herb from the Louisville Paleontological Society kindly sent us a few interesting samples collected by him personally, and we are going to share the fun of exploring these samples with you. To capture the microscopic beauty of fossils and cellular structures of petrified wood, we used this setup, an eyepiece of a dissecting scope flipped upside down and attached to a camera with 60x zoom. Let's start with the sample from the Salem Limestone Formation, collected at a railroad cut exposure known as Spurgeon Hill. It is located a few miles east of Salem, Indiana. The sample represents early Carboniferous deposits, roughly 340 million years old, and it is full of chubby Foraminifera. Their coiled shells resemble those of gastropods, but Foraminifera are single-celled organisms and their shells have divided into separate chambers. I think calling them single-celled is a bit of a stretch because the chambers effectively divide the animal in separate compartments connected by pores. The cells in multi-celled organisms are also not completely isolated. Take the gap junctions, for example. Foraminifera can have multiple nuclei as well. It seems that Foraminifera simply found an alternative way to compartmentalize their bodies. On the right, there is a pile of ostracods, which are often called seed shrimp. They are free-floating crustaceans with two-valve exoskeletons that make them look like clams. Little cute animals used to hide inside the shells. They had slim joint appendages used for movement or catching food. The fossils are a bit dusty, probably covered with calcium carbonate deposited on their surfaces. Let's see what happens if we add a drop of vinegar in an attempt to clean the fossils. A quick release of bubbles means that the acidic acid dissolves the calcium carbonate coating, creating CO2 gas and free calcium ions. This procedure is fun to watch, and it helps to see more details on the fossils, but remember, it may be destructive. An ostracod carapace became fragile and we ended up breaking it, so don't overdo it. Simple soaking and washing in regular water may work as well. By the way, chemical composition could be one of the ways to identify fragments of fossils because different organisms built their external and internal skeletons from certain elements. Gastropods, bryozoans, and ammonites did it with calcium carbonate. Brachiopods use calcium phosphate. Foraminifera made shells from calcium carbonate and also glued together fine sediment particles to create their shells, or tests to be precise. This is why they are called testate foraminiferans. So we are looking at tests, no matter how weird it sounds. Identifying the species is not an easy task in the case of foraminifera. Scientists go out of their way to find minute differences in morphology to name new species. There are thousands of extinct species of foraminifera. In our case, it is likely Endothera, a common genus of Carboniferous foraminifera. Endothera bialei is a species that existed between 360 and 325 million years ago. Geologists use such index fossils to determine the age of deposits and guide the drilling in search for oil. Here's a photo that will give you an idea about the actual size of these miniature fossils. The word formina is used in anatomy to describe holes in plural. Our skulls, for instance, have foramina to allow nerves and blood vessels to pass through the bone. Foraminifera have multiple holes in their shells. The holes are used by these microscopic animals to extend out their long pseudopodia and catch food particles or prey. Crinoid columnals are quite common in the sample, as sea lilies were the dominating feature of the marine environment of the Carboniferous period. We also have plenty of gastropods in the sample. The elongated ones look like turritella. Tiny silica crystals very often fill the cavities inside the shells. When the original material is eroded away, 
casts of silica are often left for us to explore and find out what happened to the remnants of the ancient organisms. Nature leaves such puzzles for us in every scoop of gravel. Thanks for watching! Please like or share this video, and check out our other episodes if you're interested in natural curiosities. And, of course, special thanks to Herb for sending us samples from his collection. Cheers! Thank you.